Hey, I'm Fight the Flat Earth. Welcome back to the channel that likes to chase stupidity around the corner, right into the waiting arms of science, which then brutally murders it. See, I'm really confused about the way that flirts think and act because they constantly deny that science is real, yet they're quite happy to use scientifically developed technology to spout their nonsense online about science not being real. They constantly misunderstand things like the curve calculator or Metabunk, which is designed to help you calculate the curve of Earth, but they somehow use it to prove a flat Earth. I mean, I've got a video about that coming soon. They refuse to accept any photographic evidence, be it from space or from land, unless it proves what they want it to, like the world record long distance photograph. They say that it totally proves a flat Earth when it really doesn't. See, I've got a video about that coming soon as well. But they mostly just ignore science, outright reject it, or just replace it with their own twisted version of what they think science should be. So that's why today I'm hopefully going to teach them a little bit of science, specifically Mr. Thrive and Survive, otherwise known as Lion Connive, who really, really, really doesn't understand the Coriolis Force. Cue the intro. Who am I talking to? I edit my own videos. We're living on a disc, floating through space, with a tiny sun. <laughs> First off, there's one thing I would like to clear up. The Coriolis force is referred to as a fictitious force. This does not mean that it doesn't exist or it's just made up. What it means is there is no actual force present. Instead, it's a result of the fact that the reference frame is spinning, which adds an additional influence to objects in motion within a frame of reference with respect to an inertial reference frame. Newton's laws of motion describe the motion of an object within an inertial, non-accelerating frame of reference. So when Newton's laws are then transferred to a rotating frame of reference, the Coriolis force and centrifugal forces appear. Imagine sitting on a roundabout which is spinning counterclockwise. You've got a ball and you want to roll the ball to the person opposite you on the roundabout as it's spinning. To the person, it will seem like the ball is deflecting to the right. However, for a person standing outside of the roundabout or outside the frame of reference, it will appear that the ball is traveling in a straight line. Anyway, I hope that clears that up, Lamar. Now, let's have a look what Mr. Thrive and Survive has to say. Okay, here's the model we have. What science tells us, we're going to blow this away right now. I doubt you are. I really, really doubt that you are. I mean, you couldn't even get a podium finish in dumb fuck of the air. Dude, you need to up your game. Uh, in the Northern Hemisphere, okay, it's, it doesn't matter if you're, you're facing this spin or not, the effect is the same. But here's the problem, all right? The equator is roughly here, all right? And this is always a problem with, uh, have you ever noticed this? Um, the equator actually runs through here in South America. Doesn't that always appear like it's below halfway? Has anybody else ever noticed that? Uh... But... I mean, have have you? I mean, have you looked at a globe or or a, or a map or anything? I mean, you're looking at, at one right now. I mean, this this doesn't give me high hopes. Anyway, uh, the sun is uh, where the camera is to this, let's say, and it's you know we have this as it moves around the sun, it's either moving up or down slightly between the trap of Tropic of Cancer in the north and Tropic of Capricorn in the south. And this is just the way it happens all the time. And yet for some reason, let's look down here in Australia, down here below the equator. Which way is the Earth rotating? Uh, west to east. Now let's go above the equator in the northern hemisphere. Which way is the Earth rotating? Yes, still towards the east. It's rotating towards the east. So why do we have clockwise high pressure systems in the northern hemisphere and counterclockwise high pressure systems in the southern hemisphere? <laughs> oh wait you're serious oh right okay um get a ball and spin it the same direction that the earth is spinning look at it on the top and it's, it's spinning counterclockwise right now look at it from the bottom it's rotating the same direction but it looks like it's spinning clockwise right i mean come on maybe the ocean currents create help create the high pressure systems but i think it's most likely the other way around so, if you guys haven't heard of Mr. Thrive and Survive, he claims that he used to be a weatherman. Now, these are questions that could easily be answered by a weatherman. 
you know, or Google, even Bing. And again, in the Southern Hemisphere, I am sure without even looking it up, that the counterclockwise flows cause the ocean currents to do the same thing down there. They move counterclockwise while in the north it moves clockwise. All right. This makes no sense on a spinning globe why you would have that. What, what is the difference? Just because you're south of the equator, it spins the other way. Does that make any sense? Aren't you still moving west to east? That is absolutely correct. You know what? I don't think he is a weatherman or ever was a weatherman. In fact, I don't even think he passed geography class at school. I think we need to take a trip to the remedial classroom. <laughs> Quiet down, class. I said, quiet down. Everybody, shush. Thank you. Now, pay attention, especially you, Mr. Riley. You've got a competition to win. Now, the equator, that's this bit here in the middle, is heated more than the other areas. And as hot things go up, the heated air rises and the cold air sinks. resulting in a low pressure area at the equator and high pressure area at the poles. Convection occurs at the thermal equator. Poleward moving air is forced to descend. This produces two belts of subtropical high pressures centered around the 30 degrees latitude. Surface winds spiral out from the subtropical highs moving towards the equator as well as the mid latitudes. The cycle is powered by the Hadley cell and causes a continual cycle of high pressure, which because of the wind direction caused by the Coriolis force that Mr. Thrive and Survive just pointed out. In other words, the wind deflects to the right in the north and to the left in the south. This causes the cycle to be clockwise in the northern hemisphere and counterclockwise in the southern hemisphere. Okay class, make sure you've got your notes, there will be a test, and please hand in your homework before you leave. And no Mr. Thatcher, Giants stole my homework, is not a good enough excuse this time. Whenever you look up the Coriolis effect, it'll tell you that in the Northern Hemisphere, high pressure will move clockwise, and in the, in the Southern Hemisphere, it will move counterclockwise. But in both cases, it's deflected, the air is deflected to the left. Nope, that's it, he's definitely not a weatherman. In the north the wind is deflected to the right and in the south the wind is deflected to the left. You really should have looked that up, eh? It doesn't matter, it's stupid. <sighs> Fuck you, you're stupid, dick. Why would an imaginary line, the center point, change it? And it's because, not because it is, you, this cannot be explained by science. Well, I disagree with you Mr. Thrive and Survive, the problem is that you are the one that can explain it with science. Me, I can explain the globe pretty well with science. See, the key is to not be a total dumb fuck. Should we see how he's gonna try and explain it? It can be explained on a flat earth and what you just watched, it can be explained. So let's get there and take a look at it. Okay, here's what we have the uh, now famous, or becoming famous, Peter's pro projection map, which has all the different continents at the right size. Hmm. Well, that's not, quite right either. The Peter's projection map doesn't have the continents at the right size, more they're the correct size in relation to each other. What it does is at the equator it stretches, whereas at the poles it squishes. Isn't it funny how the United States is so much bigger on those spheres that NASA shows us? How much huge, how huge it is compared to all this other stuff? So what is it with Flurfs and NASA that they seem to think that Everyone in the world uses NASA as the authority on what the globe is. Do you think every other space agency in the world just, just copies NASA? Or that anyone that's making a globe has to give NASA a call first and check for the details? I mean, that, that's just ridiculous. I mean, I'm from the UK. You do know that the UK has its own space program, right? Well, stop laughing, it does. And yet when we get something that shows an accurate depiction of how large each place actually is, Suddenly, North America kind of shrinks, doesn't it? Africa kind of becomes much larger. So NASA's got a little bit of work to do on their uh, Apollo 17 sphere image. What, this picture? The, uh, the, the, the one taken that shows Africa and, and the Middle East and, and not North America. Has this guy ever looked at a globe? And I don't know where exactly the high is set up. They're probably set up just like this in the south 
Um, it doesn't matter because wherever they set up, they are counterclockwise. And what is the explanation for this on a spinning globe? The whole thing is moving this direction. So why is it counterclockwise down here and clockwise up here? Because as I've already explained, in the Northern Hemisphere, the wind is deflected to the right. And in the Southern Hemisphere, the wind is deflected to the left because the Coriolis force is stronger near the poles. Right, that's it, I'm calling it. This guy was never a weatherman. You know what, guys? This is a proof the Earth does not spin. What? 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 No, no, it's proof of the exact opposite. This makes no sense at all. Why all of a sudden you pass an imaginary line at the center and then the wind would be the opposite direction. It makes no sense whatsoever. Have you ever seen science come up with an explanation why? Yes, I've already told you the air in Earth's atmosphere moves from high pressure to low pressure. There is no explanation why. Yes, there is, and I've literally just explained it. I'm gonna move on from Mr. Thrive and Survive and talk about one of the best examples in the solar system of the Coriolis force. Jupiter's red spot and Jupiter itself are both great examples of the Coriolis effect, as you can clearly see the bands of gas in layers on Jupiter. This is caused by the fact that parts near the equator are moving faster than the poles, just like on Earth. The giant red spot is a storm that has been raging since at least as far back as 1831, but some reports say as far back as 1665. The storm is fueled by the Coriolis effect, and although it is getting smaller, it's still big enough to fit our entire planet inside. Other examples of the Coriolis force are things like the Etfos effect, which actually make you weigh less, very slightly, if you're traveling towards the east. And another thing, I personally know snipers who have had to correct for the Coriolis force when targeting. Well, that's all for today on the Coriolis force, but it's not gonna be the last time I talk about it. I am doing a series of half hour documentaries on science and scientific endeavors. And one of the things I'm gonna talk about in that is the Coriolis force and the science that has been developed around it. So if you wanna see that, stick around as the first episode will be out next month. If you've enjoyed this, please like and subscribe, get the notification bell on so you know as soon as I've got something out or I go live, and come back on Saturday when me, and the Creaky Blinder look at the amazingly dumb, dumb world of M. Benz. Thank you very much to my patrons. You guys are amazing. And remember, stupidity is not a right. Living Fight the flat earth. Floating through space with a tiny sun. Yeah.